July 1. Hezekiah reopens the temple. In the very first month of the first year of his reign, Hezekiah reopened the doors of the temple of the Lord and repaired them. He summoned the priests and Levites to meet him at the courtyard east of the temple. He said to them, Listen to me, you Levites. Purify yourselves and purify the temple of the Lord, the God of your ancestors. Remove all the defiled things from the sanctuary. Our ancestors were unfaithful and did what was evil in the sight of the Lord our God. They abandoned the Lord and his dwelling place. They turned their backs on him. They also shut the doors to the temple's entry room. And they snuffed out the lamps. They stopped burning incense and presenting burnt offerings at the sanctuary of the God of Israel. That is why the Lord's anger has fallen upon Judah and Jerusalem. He has made them an object of dread, horror, and ridicule, as you can see with your own eyes. Because of this, our fathers have been killed in battle, and our sons and daughters and wives have been captured. But now I will make a covenant with the Lord, the God of Israel, so that his fierce anger will turn away from us. My sons, do not neglect your duties any longer. The Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to minister to him, and to lead the people in worship and present offerings to him. Then these Levites got right to work. From the clan of Kohath... Mahath, son of Amasai, and Joel, son of Azariah. From the clan of Mirari, Kish, son of Abdi, and Azariah, son of Jehalalel. From the clan of Gershon, Joah, son of Zima, and Eden, son of Joah. From the family of Elizaphan, Shimri, and Jeiel. From the family of Asaph, Zechariah, and Mataniah. From the family of Heman, Jehiel, and Shimei. From the family of Juduthan, Shimea, and Uziel. These men called together their fellow Levites, and they all purified themselves. Then they began to cleanse the temple of the Lord, just as the king had commanded. They were careful to follow all the Lord's instructions in their work. The priests went into the sanctuary of the temple of the Lord to cleanse it, and they took out to the temple courtyard all the defiled things they found. From there, the Levites carted it all out to the Kidron Valley. They began the work in early spring, on the first day of the new year, and in eight days they had reached the entry room of the Lord's temple. Then they purified the temple of the Lord itself, which took another eight days. So the entire task was completed in sixteen days. The Temple Rededication Then the Levites went to King Hezekiah and gave him this report. We have cleansed the entire temple of the Lord, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the table of the bread of the presence with all its utensils. We have also recovered all the items discarded by King Ahaz when he was unfaithful and closed the temple. They are now in front of the altar of the Lord, purified and ready for use. Early the next morning, King Hezekiah gathered the city officials and went to the temple of the Lord. They brought seven bulls, seven rams, and seven male lambs as a burnt offering, together with seven male goats as a sin offering for the kingdom, for the temple, and for Judah. The king commanded the priests who were descendants of Aaron to sacrifice the animals on the altar of the Lord. So they killed the bulls, and the priests took the blood and sprinkled it on the altar. Next, they killed the rams and sprinkled their blood on the altar. And finally, they did the same with the male lambs. The male goats for the sin offering were then brought before the king and the assembly of people who laid their hands on them. The priests then killed the goats as a sin offering and sprinkled their blood on the altar to make atonement for the sins of all Israel. The king had specifically commanded that this burnt offering and sin offering should be made for all Israel. King Hezekiah then stationed the Levites at the temple of the Lord with cymbals, lyres, and harps. He obeyed all the commands that the Lord had given to King David through Gad, the king's seer, and the prophet Nathan. The Levites then took their positions around the temple with the instruments of David, and the priests took their positions with the trumpets. Then Hezekiah ordered that the burnt offering be placed on the altar. As the burnt offering was presented, songs of praise to the Lord were begun, accompanied by the trumpets and other instruments of David, the former king of Israel. The entire assembly worshipped the Lord as the singers sang and the trumpets blew, until all the burnt offerings were finished. Then the king and everyone with him bowed down in worship. King Hezekiah and the officials ordered the Levites to praise the Lord with the psalms written by David and by Asaph the seer.
So they offered joyous praise and bowed down in worship. Then Hezekiah declared, Now that you have consecrated yourselves to the Lord, bring your sacrifices and thanksgiving offerings to the temple of the Lord. So the people brought their sacrifices and thanksgiving offerings, and all whose hearts were willing brought burnt offerings too. The people brought to the Lord seventy bulls, one hundred rams, and two hundred male lambs for burnt offerings. They also brought six hundred cattle and three thousand sheep and goats as sacred offerings. But there were too few priests to prepare all the burnt offerings, so their relatives, the Levites, helped them until the work was finished and more priests had been purified, for the Levites had been more conscientious about purifying themselves than the priests had been. There was an abundance of burnt offerings along with the usual liquid offerings and a great deal of fat from the many peace offerings. So the temple of the Lord was restored to service, and Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced because of what God had done for the people, for everything had been accomplished so quickly. Preparations for Passover King Hezekiah now sent word to all Israel and Judah, and he wrote letters of invitation to the people of Ephraim and Manasseh. He asked everyone to come to the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover of the Lord, the God of Israel. The king, his officials, and all the community of Jerusalem decided to celebrate Passover a month later than usual. They were unable to celebrate it at the prescribed time because not enough priests could be purified by then, and the people had not yet assembled at Jerusalem. This plan for keeping the Passover seemed right to the king and all the people. So they sent a proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba in the south to Dan in the north, inviting everyone to come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover of the Lord, the God of Israel. The people had not been celebrating it in great numbers as required in the law. At the king's command, runners were sent throughout Israel and Judah. They carried letters that said, O people of Israel, return to the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, so that he will return to the few of us who have survived the conquest of the Assyrian kings. Do not be like your ancestors and relatives who abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and became an object of derision, as you yourselves can see. Do not be stubborn as they were, but submit yourselves to the Lord. Come to his temple, which he has set apart as holy forever. Worship the Lord your God so that his fierce anger will turn away from you. For if you return to the Lord, your relatives and your children will be treated mercifully by their captors, and they will be able to return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful. If you return to him, he will not continue to turn his face from you. Celebration of Passover The runners went from town to town throughout Ephraim and Manasseh and as far as the territory of Zebulun. But most of the people just laughed at the runners and made fun of them. However, some people from Asher, Manasseh, and Zebulun humbled themselves and went to Jerusalem. At the same time, God's hand was on the people in the land of Judah, giving them all one heart to obey the orders of the king and his officials who were following the word of the Lord. So a huge crowd assembled at Jerusalem in mid-spring to celebrate the festival of unleavened bread. They set to work and removed the pagan altars from Jerusalem. They took away all the incense altars and threw them into the Kidron Valley. On the fourteenth day of the second month, one month later than usual, the people slaughtered the Passover lamb. This shamed the priests and Levites, so they purified themselves and brought burnt offerings to the temple of the Lord. Then they took their places at the temple as prescribed in the law of Moses, the man of God. The Levites brought the sacrificial blood to the priests, who then sprinkled it on the altar. Since many of the people had not purified themselves, the Levites had to slaughter their Passover lamb for them to set them apart for the Lord. Most of those who came from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun had not purified themselves. But King Hezekiah prayed for them, and they were allowed to eat the Passover meal anyway, even though this was contrary to the requirements of the law. For Hezekiah said, May the Lord who is good pardon those who decide to follow the Lord, the God of their ancestors, even though they are not properly cleansed for the ceremony. And the Lord listened to Hezekiah's prayer and healed the people. 
So the people of Israel who were present in Jerusalem joyously celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. Each day the Levites and priests sang to the Lord, accompanied by loud instruments. Hezekiah encouraged all the Levites regarding the skill they displayed as they served the Lord. The celebration continued for seven days. Peace offerings were sacrificed, and the people gave thanks to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. The entire assembly then decided to continue the festival another seven days, so they celebrated joyfully for another week. King Hezekiah gave the people 1,000 bulls and 7,000 sheep and goats for offerings, and the officials donated 1,000 bulls and 10,000 sheep and goats. Meanwhile, many more priests purified themselves. The entire assembly of Judah rejoiced, including the priests, the Levites, all who came from the land of Israel, the foreigners who came to the festival, and all those who lived in Judah. There was great joy in the city, for Jerusalem had not seen a celebration like this one since the days of Solomon, King David's son. Then the priests and Levites stood and blessed the people, and God heard their prayer from his holy dwelling in heaven. Hezekiah's Religious Reforms When the festival ended, the Israelites who attended went to all the towns of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh, and they smashed all the sacred pillars, cut down the Asherah poles, and removed the pagan shrines and altars. After this, the Israelites returned to their own towns and homes. Hezekiah then organized the priests and Levites into divisions to offer the burnt offerings and peace offerings, and to worship and give thanks and praise to the Lord at the gates of the temple. The king also made a personal contribution of animals for the daily morning and evening burnt offerings, the weekly Sabbath festivals, the monthly new moon festivals, and the annual festivals as prescribed in the law of the Lord. In addition, he required the people in Jerusalem to bring a portion of their goods to the priests and Levites, so they could devote themselves fully to the law of the Lord. The people of Israel responded immediately and generously by bringing the first of their crops and grain, new wine, olive oil, honey, and all the produce of their fields. They brought a large quantity, a tithe of all they produced. The people who had moved to Judah from Israel and the people of Judah themselves brought in the tithes of their cattle, sheep, and goats, and a tithe of the things that had been dedicated to the Lord their God, and they piled them up in great heaps. They began piling them up in late spring, and the heaps continued to grow until early autumn. When Hezekiah and his officials came and saw these huge piles, they thanked the Lord and his people Israel. Where did all this come from? Hezekiah asked the priests and Levites. And Azariah the high priest from the family of Zadok replied, Since the people began bringing their gifts to the Lord's temple, we have had enough to eat and plenty to spare. The Lord has blessed his people, and all this is left over. Hezekiah ordered that storerooms be prepared in the temple of the Lord. When this was done, the people faithfully brought all the tithes and gifts to the temple. Conaniah the Levite was put in charge, assisted by his brother Shimei. The supervisors under them were Jehiel, Azaziah, Nahath, Asahel, Jeremoth, Jazabad, Eliel, Ismachiah, Mahath, and Benaiah. These appointments were made by King Hezekiah and Azariah the chief official, in the temple of God. Kor, son of Imna the Levite, who was the gatekeeper at the east gate, was put in charge of distributing the voluntary offerings given to God, the gifts, and the things that had been dedicated to the Lord. His faithful assistants were Eden, Minamin, Jeshua, Shemaiah, Amariah, and Shechaniah. They distributed the gifts among the families of priests in their towns by their divisions, dividing the gifts fairly among old and young alike. They distributed the gifts to all males three years old or older, regardless of their place in the genealogical records. The distribution went to all who would come to the Lord's temple to perform their daily duties, according to their divisions. They distributed gifts to the priests who were listed by their families in the genealogical records and to the Levites twenty years old or older who were listed according to their jobs and their divisions. Food allotments were also given to the families of all those listed in the genealogical records, including their little babies, wives, sons, and daughters, for they had all been faithful in purifying themselves. As for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, who were living in the open villages around the towns, men were appointed by name to distribute portions to every male among the priests and to all the Levites listed in the genealogical records. 
In this way, King Hezekiah handled the distribution throughout all Judah, doing what was pleasing and good in the sight of the Lord his God. In all that he did in the service of the temple of God and in his efforts to follow God's laws and commands, Hezekiah sought his God wholeheartedly. As a result, he was very successful.